Did you know that DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid in all human beings is 99.9% .9 identical? It is that one-tenth of one percent difference that makes us all unique. DNA derives its name from deoxyribonucleic acid, a type of nucleic acid. Nucleic acids are made up of polynucleotide chains, which are formed by several nucleotides or molecules that make up the structure of the DNA when bonded together. In fact, the length of a DNA is defined by the number of nucleotides or pairs of nucleotides present in the DNA. A pair of nucleotides is also known as a base pair. For example, E. coli has 4.6 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 6 base pairs. And bacteriophage lambda has 48,502 base pairs while the haploid content of human DNA has 3.3 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 9 base pairs. It was in the year 1869 that Friedrich Miescher first identified DNA as an acidic material present in the nucleus and called it the nuclein. However, technical limitations made it very difficult to isolate such a long polymer intact and therefore, no further interpretations regarding the structure of DNA were made for several years. Finally, in 1953, James Watson and Francis Crick proposed a simple double helix model for the structure of DNA. They did this with the help from the X-ray diffraction data that was created by Maurice Wilkins and Rosalind Franklin. Further, James Watson and Francis Crick proposed that base pairing existed between two strands of polynucleotide chains, which was a distinctive attribute of their proposition. This proposition was based on the observations made by Erwin Chagaff, who found that the ratios between adenine and thymine and guanine and cytosine are constant and equal to 1 for a double-stranded DNA. In fact, due to base pairing, the polynucleotide chains possess a very unique property, that is, the strands of the base pairs are complementary to each other. Therefore, if we know the sequence of bases on one strand, it is possible to predict the sequence in the other. Moreover, when two strands of a parental DNA separate, each serves as a template for synthesis of a new daughter strand because of complementary base pairing, and the two double-stranded daughter DNA generated are identical to the parent DNA molecule. Thus, these discoveries provided a clearer picture to the genetic implications of the DNA structure, and soon, the DNA double helix structure and its simplicity in explaining genetic implications became revolutionary. Let us now learn about the chemical structure of a polynucleotide chain present in the DNA double helix structure. The polynucleotide chain is made up of three components, a nitrogenous base, a phosphate group, and a pentose sugar, which is deoxyribose. Further, the nitrogenous base is of two types, purines and pyrimidines. The purines comprise adenine and guanine, while the pyrimidines comprise cytosine and thymine. Now, through an N-glycosidic linkage, a nitrogenous base is linked to the pentose sugar, forming a nucleoside, which can be guanosine or deoxyguanosine, adenosine or deoxyadenosine, uridine, or deoxythymidin and citidin or deoxycitidin. Conversely, depending on the sugar present, a nucleotide or a deoxynucleotide is formed when a phosphate group is linked to 5 prime OH of a nucleoside through the phosphoester linkage. 
Also, a dinucleotide is formed when two nucleotides are linked through a 3 prime, 5 prime phosphodiester linkage and several such nucleotides can join similarly to form a polynucleotide chain. At one end of this chain is a free phosphate moiety at the 5 prime end of ribose sugar, which is called the 5 prime end of the polynucleotide chain. Similarly, at the other end of the chain is present a ribose with a free 3 prime OH group, which is called the 3 prime end of the polynucleotide chain. A salient feature of the double helix DNA structure is that it comprises two polynucleotide chains, the backbone of which is constituted by sugar phosphate with bases projecting inside. The double helix structure has several other salient features too. Its two polynucleotide chains have anti-parallel polarity. That is, if one chain has a polarity 5-3- the other has 3-5-. Moreover, the bases of the two DNA strands are paired with the help of hydrogen bonds forming base pairs. Adenine is bonded with thymine from the opposite strand with two hydrogen bonds and vice versa. Similarly, guanine is bonded with cytosine with three hydrogen bonds. Because of this structure, a purine always comes opposite to a pyrimidine which results in a uniform distance being maintained between the two helix strands. Another salient feature of the helix structure is that the two chains are coiled in a right-handed fashion. Therefore, the pitch of the helix is 3.4 nanometers and each turn consists of about 10 base pairs. As a result, the distance between a base pair and a helix is around 0.34 nanometers. Additionally, in a DNA double helix, the plane of one base pair stacks over the other, which along with the hydrogen bonds, makes the helical structure very stable. The stable DNA helix structure allows it to be the genetic material that has instructions for the development and functioning of all known living organisms.